Hi, I'm Cam with the Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of December 15th. The sun has been incredibly quiet this week, except for a few filament eruptions, like the one you see on the southwest limb right here. There is also a beautiful eruption just north of center disk right here that happened on the 12th. It might be Earth directed, but it looks like it might actually be going just northeast of us. We've also had some flare activity from a new region on the east limb, and region 2227 has been giving some more flare activity just over the last 24 hours or so. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we actually had an M flare back on the 5th, but then we stayed below the M flare level clear to the 13th where we began to pop back up again with this new activity. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we haven't had any solar storms as of late, but we have had some fast solar wind, and that has managed to push us up to the storm levels back on the 7th, kind of periodically, and then back down again, and then we hit yet another uh, pocket of fast solar wind that popped us up momentarily on the 12th into the 13th with some more uh, activity. And this activity has managed to bring us some very bright but very sporadic aurora both in the North Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere. You can see the aurora here over the 12th and the 13th kind of pulsating on and off. And that's because of this fast solar wind has been driving it, but it's got very, very turbulent magnetic fields that make it very difficult to predict when the aurora is going to happen. And this incredibly fast wind has given us some gorgeous aurora that outshines the moon in Norway. You have some gorgeous coronas here, uh, again in Russia, outshining the moon, and some beautiful purple coronas in the Yukon. Returning to that filament eruption that happened on the 12th, you can see here both in AIA and in the difference image, that thing looks like it's lifting pretty much to the northeast. Now when we switch to coronagraphs, you can see that thing again lifting to the northeast, but if you look at the difference image, you can kind of see a little bit of a halo that stretches down to the east part of the limb like that. That may mean that it is earth directed, but if it hits us, it probably will be a grazing passage sometime around the 16th. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see that bright region on the right. That's actually old region 2209, which is now rotated onto the front side of the disk. And you see the bright regions behind it. Those are new. And those are the regions that actually are giving us some uh, M flares at the moment. So we're watching those very, very closely. And then we have one more surprise. See region 2222? That thing actually just gave us a big flare and that might actually be the source of that radiation uh, enhancement that we're seeing right now at Earth. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2227 is moving off to the west limb, and it has been reasonably stable through most of its traversal across the Earth-facing portion of the sun. But over the last couple days, it has increased in flare activity, so we're watching it very carefully. Also, region 2230, we've been, that's the only region that's been unstable, and we've been watching that one. Uh, the, all the rest of the regions have been pretty stable, except for this new region that is giving us some M flares, and we will get a better look at it in the coming days as it rotates more into view. Looking at our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next few days, NOAA is giving us over a 40% chance of a major storm at high latitudes due to this fast solar wind that we're in. Plus, remember, we actually have a grazing solar storm passage that could hit us on the 16th, and that could impact us as well and give us some really good chances for aurora at high latitudes. At mid-latitudes, it's only about a 15% chance for a minor storm, and then things should be calming down after that. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook for the next few days, NOAA has given us about a 55% chance of M-class flares, but expect that that could increase as the activity from region 2227 and this new region continue to unfold. Also, we happen to be in elevated radiation levels right now, uh, but NOAA is keeping the additional chance of a radiation storm uh, risk to a reasonably low level as Region 2227 continues to rotate uh, past the West Limb. So this week looks like it's getting to be a bit interesting. We have some heightened M-flare activity that's happening both on the east and the west limbs and also on the back side. So you can imagine we're going to be monitoring that quite closely. Meanwhile, you ham radio operators would expect to see maybe a little bit more disruptions in your uh, operations over the next few days until region 2227 goes off the west limb. And we'll see what happens with this new region as it comes around.
Also, we have that solar storm passage, that grazing blow we might see around the 16th, as well as some fast wind. So we could, again, ham radio operators, you might get a little bit of uh, issues with uh, uh, operations uh, on the 15th and 16th. But we also could get a good chance for some aurora during this period over the next few days before things begin to settle back down. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.